Were not ten made clean? And where are the nine? There is no one found to return and give glory to God but this stranger. Words taken from the Holy Gospel for this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The fathers of the church like to say, for example, St. Athanasius said this many times as well as St. Augustine. God became man so that man might become God. God became man so that man might become God. We know the devil offered Eve what appeared to be a quick and easy solution to this very thing. If she would only eat the forbidden fruit, she would be as God. She would become a God. Instead of waiting for God to become man, instead of waiting for Christmas, waiting for the incarnation, to be given all the graces needed for reaching heaven so that she could enter into the one eternal act of God's love. She reached out and ate the fruit. It was a lie, and we know all too well that it didn't work. For she lost the likeness of God she already possessed, that is, sanctifying grace. To be like God, to become one with him in heaven, to enter into the one act of God's love for himself, we cannot bypass Christ. We cannot bypass his incarnation. We cannot bypass Christmas. And nor can we bypass Calvary. God became man so that man might become God. Now this means the path the truth incarnate chose to undo the lie of Satan and the sin of Adam and Eve. The path he chose to return to heaven, to return to God, his father, is the same path we have to take. Many saints and spiritual writers call this path the way of spiritual childhood. Why is that? Because God Almighty, his word, his almighty word, leaped down from heaven. As we read in the book of the wisdom from the royal throne and first appeared to us as a little child. His journey back to the father started in a visible way on Christmas Day. Thus, the prophet Isaiah speaks of how a little child shall lead them. The apocalypse speaks of how the saints in heaven are now gods, as it were, following the lamb, having followed the lamb, whithersoever he goeth. And now they have him in heaven. This too is our path. This too is our way. But what kind of path is this? Among other things, it is one, as we heard in the collect for this mass, one of faith, hope, and charity, first and foremost. Their object is God. Their focus is God. But they're also looking at the crib. When Christ first came to us as a little baby, what did he show us? What is the way of spiritual childhood? Humility, voluntary poverty, detachment, purity, and innocence. Although such virtues seem hard and difficult and even scary at first, especially in times like these, they require abandonment, the darkness of faith, and self-denial. We should take heart, as the angels said to the shepherds, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. The infant is here waiting. He is in swaddling clothes. In other words, he's not going anywhere. He's all tied up. He's bound himself for the love of you to help you. The Blessed Virgin Mary is also there and St. Joseph too. And they will help us. So let us face facts. We do not readily follow the way of the Lamb. The way of spiritual childhood. We get big we can become big people. We're too smart for that spiritual childhood stuff. We do not easily pass into the night of faith. We instead, we want more things rather than less. We want to fill our senses with the delights of this world. We think along different lines than those provided by the infant. Today, more than ever before, perhaps, 
We make God submit to our way of thinking, to our reasoning, to our ideas, to our political systems, to our sciences. I think, therefore, I am, said René Descartes, the father of modern philosophy and all modernism, basically. If we cannot think of it or know it or know about it according to our own way of thinking, we're not going to submit to it too easily. This translates into, we will make ourselves a God without God made man, without his church, without Christmas. This is the original sin all over again. Now, it seems to me, the great Russian writer, novelist, Fyodor Dostoevsky captured the heart of this problem very well. In one single statement, he places on the tongue of the holy monk, Father Zosima. You can read it in his magnum opus, The Brothers Karamazov. Father Zosima says this, Active love, active love is a harsh and fearful thing as compared with love and dreams. Active love is a harsh and fearful thing as compared with love and dreams. Okay, so there is active love and there's love and dreams. Love and dreams feeds the lie that Adam and Eve embraced. You will be like God now. Active love is the way of the Lamb, the way of God, the way out of this world. So let us consider a few examples. So let's just go back to Christmas. We can dream of our Lord coming to earth and being welcomed, at least by many and loving people, many loving people. How he would be born in pillared halls, placed in a crib fit for a king, in a warm room and with many adorers and much fanfare. How there would be an army of loyal servants and soldiers at his beck and call. But wait a minute. What of the need for voluntary poverty, detachment and humility? Where did it go? But love and dreams dictates how. When he would grow up, he would gloriously conquer the world with his army of angels and men for God, his father, love and dreams, how the whole world would be united and made holy ground. No more errors, lies, falsehoods and heresies. What blessed Francis Palau calls the claws of Satan. No more of these lies and errors and falsehoods and heresies. No more claws of Satan. No more hunger, disease, and disasters, hurricanes. Love and dreams wants immediate action, quickly performed with everyone watching and no long suffering, no patience in trial or signs of contradictions to overcome. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, what about the need for faith? What about self-denial and perseverance? What of innocence and purity of body and heart? Ah, love and dreams. These ideals will only come to pass in the second coming, not the first. These come after his birth from the virgin tomb, not after the birth from the virgin womb. And they will come about in ways we cannot fathom. So wonderful will they be far beyond our dreams. That's for sure. But in the meantime, the devil loves the idealists who impatiently refuse the first coming, refuse the way of spiritual childhood. They reject Christmas and Calvary in some way or other and try to make things happen according to their own formulations, their own ideas and dreams. They don't want any of this groaning of Christ on the cross. The devil has little trouble selling these people all kinds of lies. These enthusiasts are what kept the various heresies and communist revolutions fueled and running for decades. And many are still going. And what did they do? They wiped out billions of men and destroy the faith in whole countries, destroy culture. These things, these idealists and their false ideologies, these dreamy paradise ideologies continue to this day in a multitude of movements around the world and not just communistic ones. Sigh, 
the love in dreams. Now, love in action, we look at the other hand, is a terrible and fearful thing, says Father Zosima. Terrible and fearful to our poor little human nature and our poor little human ways of thinking and acting. But as the angel said, we should not be afraid. Active love humbles itself, empties itself, hides itself. Hmm? Why is there a wall around this place? Active love. God comes down to earth, hugs the earth, as it were, kisses the earth, as it were, by taking on our human flesh and even watering the earth with his tears and his lifeblood. Active love is seemingly defenseless, helpless, vulnerable, humble, detached, poor. Active love binds itself for us men in our salvation. First in the womb of the Virgin Mary as a confined space. Then in the swaddling clothes, he was wrapped up like a mummy. And then on the wood of the cross, nailed there. And finally in the Eucharist, locked away in our tabernacles. Active love is born in a smelly cave. So the cave does not belong to this active love. It's poor. And it's there amidst beasts of burden in a cold of winter's night. Active love has an army. Yep, a small band of disciples who swear they will die with him no matter what. But end up running away or denying him three times or selling him for 30 pieces of silver. I looked for one to comfort me and I found none. Active love. Yes, truly. Active love is a harsh and fearful thing. And this is the way of the Lamb. And it is the way to complete freedom. And it is the way to heaven. Now, if we persevere and labor down this path of spiritual childhood, at times all will seem lost. But then, amazingly and unexpectedly, all works out according to our faith. God loves to work great reversals. Read the scriptures. Read the lines of the saints. He's always working them. In the powerlessness of the infant, grace flows. Faith is what is needed. Surely some here have experienced the truth of this. For priests, they dream of preaching ideal sermons just the right length, to the point and clear. But we end up stumbling along. That our holy masses might be filled with faithful souls, standing room only. But few come. We dream that people will convert at what we say and how we help them. But they continue in their sinful ways. We want everybody to come to Mass and stay and love it, but they end up leaving early. Of people going to frequent confession, but they put it off for years. Of people always receiving Holy Communion in a state of grace, but many come to the altar rail without a clear conscience. Active love is a harsh and fearful thing as composed to love and dreams. Sometimes you even have whisperers behind you undermining what you try to do because they don't have guts to come to you and tell you what they find difficult. They don't like the way of the lamb. They want the way of dreams. For religious, they dream of the ideal community with perfect observance, kind superiors, but they enter Noah's Ark with all its smells and wild animals and its confinement. Read the life of St. Therese. Read the real life of St. Therese. When she entered the Carmel, there were a bunch of crazy people in there. It's hard. Active love. For parents, they dream of raising perfect children, intelligent, obedient, holy, virtuous, supportive, but many end up going astray in some way or other. For young people, they dream. Oh, it's one of the hardest things for a priest. For young people, they dream of the ideal marriage. That things will be different for them than for their parents and everybody else. That they will work out just right for them somehow. But then they get married and have to embrace active love. Or run away. 
Active love is a terrible and fearful thing as compared with love and dreams. Here then is the lesson. When we think we know the right answer, when we think we have the solution, when we think we know better, we're almost certainly in the realm of dreams. We're dreaming of the ideal religious life, the ideal marriage, ideal husband, ideal wife, ideal family, ideal pope, ideal priest, ideal diocese, parish, ideal president, ideal country. And oh, how easy it is to project our ideals upon these people and things in an effort to make them fit what we want them to be. Thereby, sad to say, carving out a psychological and emotional pit into which we will fall sooner or later when the reality hits us. Many in Israel fell into this pit Because the infant king, the infant king did not fit their ideas, nor did he match their ideas on that Friday we call good. Even his closest disciples. If we want to rise with him, we should immediately recognize that this sort of thinking, dreamy love, does not follow the way of the Lamb who himself passed through the great tribulation as a sign of contradiction. We too must go this way. When we feel those dreamy ideals come upon us, therefore we should immediately humble ourselves. As it were, we should hug and kiss the ground, watering it with our tears, recognizing that we are very little, and stop thinking that we know so much about such great matters, and work with what God has given us, and pray to love your cross, and it will change. God became man, that man might become God. This is the way he chose to go, and we must follow on this path. We will keep watch with him on this path, with the truth, and conquer the lie of Satan. On this path, we avoid the contempt, both of ourselves and for others, that we will produce by having that ideal, dreamy love. On this path, we'll avoid fear, which is simply the consequence of some lie. Usually, the consequence of falling into that pit we dug for ourselves. On this path, not even our own faint-heartedness and sins, nor those of others, will frighten us or shock us. For they will just show us how little we really are and how much we really need the help of the infant king. Now, it seems to me this message is summed up nearly perfectly in a poem written by the Carmelite martyr of Compiègne, Blessed Teresa of St. Augustine. She and her 15 companions brought an end to the French Revolution's darkest hour, the Reign of Terror. They died on July 17, 1794, and the Reign of Terror ended 10 days later after their voluntary sacrifice. It ended... After the length of a novena, listen carefully to Blessed Teresa of St. Augustine. O infant God, naught else can fill my longing. Yes, nothing else can satisfy my heart. It is settled then, henceforth I'm thy belonging. And of thy love I've now become a part. My criminal soul, heal of its sin so shameful. Wound thou my heart with pain or love's delight. Let wounds divine, wounds for my soul so grateful, martyr my heart to suffer day and night. O love divine, I now with all my being, here at thy crib, abandoned all my soul. I thus yield up my reasoning and my seeing, From this time forth, my faith in thee is bold. Thy heart alone, thy heart shall be my master. Thoughts and desires I sacrifice as weak. Within thy heart, I would now be seized faster. The martyrdom of love alone I seek. Sweet Savior God, fix my hope. O fix it all on dying. Truly I die from not dying for thee. 
and hasten, Lord, the end of all my sighing. Freed from these chains, to thee alone I flee. Let thy blade cut, completing all my offerings. For nothing but thy will for me is sweet. My one desire is that my, thy hand be hovering over me, thy bride. The sacrifice complete. Act of love <laughs> is a harsh and fearful thing as compared to love and dreams. Act of love is the way of the child Jesus has chosen to go. And where he goes, we must follow if we are to be made God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.